practical two-meter antennas for field deployment. Now we're getting into the meat of things. Are there any questions before we move on? All right. No questions. What makes, thank you, Tron. What makes for a good field antenna? It's easy to transport. You know, if you have an antenna that you need to take down and, you know, put up and it takes you 15 minutes every time, just think about it. Is that really easy? If you need to glue it to the top of your car, probably not the best part. It's easy to set up. The faster you can set up, the faster you're on the air, the faster you're helping the hospital you're supporting. Robust. You don't want something that breaks at the first um, sight of any kind of wind or anything. So buy a quality antenna. Lightweight for mounting, especially if you're using poles, like I use, for instance, these paint, painter poles. Just keep that in mind that you do want to have um, something that's light enough that you can get it up high enough in the air. Weather resistant, it does rate, uh, rain in Southern California. And for those of you who know the song, it seems it never rains in Southern California. The next line is, it pours, man, it pours. So keep that in mind. You want something that's UV resistant in Southern California and has a good weather resistance. You want a good performer. Don't get a lousy antenna. That's every dollar you spend on a lousy antenna is a wasted dollar. You want a pre-tuned and wide band. You do not want to get into a two meter antenna that you have to tune. That's just a pain, especially in the field. And if you have a nice flat SWR curve, makes it much easier. It can be directional or it can be omnidirectional depending on your use case. If you're expecting that you're at the center of a lot of other stations that you actually want to talk with, like you're at the Mac or you're at a central hospital, let's say the Hollywood hospitals or you're um, part of a DRC hospital, you do want to have an omni antenna so all the others can reach you pretty nicely. But if you are at the edge of a service area, let's say Pomona Valley, then you may want to con uh, consider a directional antenna. Why? Because you have a very clear idea of where you need to point in order to get that connection done. So you can use the higher gain on the directional antenna to actually point and at the same time you kind of filter out all the signals you don't want to hear, which is especially important in, um, in simplex. So keep that in mind. A directional antenna may be the right thing for you. It should certainly be part of your kit at some point, and they're not super expensive either. I'll show you a couple of examples. By the way, directional antennas with gain, with a lot of, with a, with a high gain number, have a big advantage. Because of antenna reciprocity, your higher gain is both on the send and the receive. So the other side doesn't have to change anything for you to enjoy the benefits of the higher gain because it is both on the send and the receive. All right, roll-ups, very popular. They're lightweight, they're easy to deploy. Please keep in mind when you're using them, they need to be half lambda dis or half a wavelength, that's what lambda stands for, um, distance from the pole or wall. Um, that's just because you actually detune the antenna the closer you get it to metal. And a lot of the walls here, especially operating in hospitals, are concrete with steel on the inside. So at very least, keep it half a wavelength away. For a two meter antenna, that would be what? A meter. So that's three feet. If you can get more, hey, more power to you. Popular choices are the Ed Fong dual band antenna. Um, the roll-ups are, con he says uh, on the website, are rated up to 60 watts. But during the PRC video conference Ed gave, he was very clear about that. Don't put more than 10 watts into these antennas. That's not what they're designed for. They're designed for HTs and low power operations. All right. Can you put in more? Yes. Can you do that over an extended period? Probably not. And in digital, probably not a good idea. And I've, I've had experiences like that where, which made me thought, I think, eh, probably not. If you want to have something higher power, N9TAX antennas, they're great antennas, they're slim gems. They can take at least 150 watts. They're twice as heavy, but they roll up nicely. Um, they come with ferrite chokes at the end. So 
great to protect your radio in that way too work really well and they're somewhat cheaper than the Ed Fong as well. I do have Ed Fongs, I do have N9TAXs. Um, I've got the Ed Fongs with uh, my GoKit HT and I've got the N9TAX with my Kenwood and my Yeso, just in case you're wondering. Omnidirectionals, tactical j poles we did a group buy for those a while ago. They're great, removable element, they're inexpensive at $40, MTC Trading sells those, and you can remove the top section of one of them and screw it into the base, so throw it in a case, very easy. They're larger than the others, they're heavier than the others, but they can withstand a lot more, and the power rating on these is, a, I think if I recall correctly, about 200 watts, not a problem. Um, great omnidirectional, just keep in mind, there's a slight bias, in the direction of the stub, a slight directionality on these um, tactical J poles. Another one that I like a whole lot, and that's actually what I'm going to use today, is the Diamond VX 30A. It's a radialless diamond antenna. So it's a diamond antenna without any radials. And it's a Gigaparts exclusive. It's $69.95 plus shipping. And they very often have about 10% uh, to sometimes it's a $10 discount on that. I've been super happy with this. And because I'm set up usually at, uh, on our balcony, not having radials, I can get the antenna above the roof line without actually touching anything. And it works extremely well. Very flat curve, um, it's very wide band, excellent tuning and that's been working phenomenally. Between the tactical J-Pole and the Diamond, I would say they're operating about the same. Um, Lynn in Pomona is the station that I usually rely on because he's right at the outer edge of um, what I can hear and send and he can't tell the difference between the two. So um, just keep in mind, it's a very nice narrow long antenna and you can actually see it here in the center. And then, of course, Oliver, the air. Yes. For for everybody's benefit, there's a question: Are the tactical and diamond dual band? Yes, they are. Both of them are. Actually, all three of them are dual band antennas. They're two meters, seventy centimeters, as are the Ed Fong and the N9TAX. So, thanks for the question. Good question. So, the air antenna, of course, has the advantage that it's um, collapsible, it's portable, and I put it in there because you know. You can hang it, ideally you hang it from an area. You also wanna keep all these antennas at least half lambda away from a metal pole. But on the tactical J pole and the VX38, it's not a big deal because you can put it on top of the pole. So no detuning there. And the air antenna you can also put on top of a pole, but I wouldn't recommend that. Ideally those are um, hung from an area. Uh, power up to 125 watts, That's those have been working really, really well. I know Mike has been using his, um, Stan, KR6CV has been using his with great success, and Tron, of course, has operated um, from compromised locations very successfully with these antennas. Directionals, high gain, focus the signal, um, they reject non-essential traffic, we already talked about that. Um, Aero antennas are a great way of doing that. Um, I've got good success with that. Here's the example of one of the ones I have, the model 146-4. That's a single band antenna, so it comes up. Um, it's a good, good question there. By and large, most two meter antennas will work on 70 centimeters. The other way around doesn't work quite as well. But this, I would probably stick to two meters. They've got specialized two meters, 70 centimeters if you want to have that option. But for what we are doing on two meter simplex, this is a great antenna to use. It breaks down into different pieces and you can actually take the sides here off these arrows and it rolls up into a small package about this size. Elk antennas, uh, I don't have one of these. This is the dual band two meter 440 L5. I know that Mike has one and he loves it. He's used it all over the place. So K, uh, KM6 KAQ, that's been working really well for him. And then finally, the Lambda Halbe um, Porti. This is a portable thing. You can't get that in the US. You actually have to buy that in Germany. You can't buy it outside of Germany. He doesn't ship outside. But, you know, it's, again, two meter, 70 centimeter antenna um, that folds up very small package, 500 grams. So keep in mind that tons of options. All right. And with that, that was the antenna talk. Anything else or shall we move on to APRS?
Hold on, just one. And position. Second, Oliver? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. There was a question in the chat about tri band. Do you have uh, a recommendation for tri band portable? No, I don't. Uh, that's a short answer for that. Um, my feeling on tri band, and I do have tri band antennas that I've used in the shield, they're even more of a compromise than a dual band antenna. If you start cramming in 220, you can, but I've always been underwhelmed with a tri band performance. Um, so I've gone over to getting, especially for 220, to have roll ups. And quite frankly, if I use it on 220, I probably am not going to switch between the bands. But the short answer is no, I don't have any recommendations. Um, for those of you interested, they're working on a tri band antenna with the air antennas. So they're looking at July, maybe August. That's the latest on that. Will I buy one? Probably not. It's just, I, I like the dual band option and I have a great um, N9TX made one, especially for 220, because usually the 220 antennas are 222 to 225, but he made one especially 220 to um, 225, a little wider band and it works really well. And again, whenever I do 220, that's all I do. Does that answer the question? I believe it does. Um, right. There's also a comment about HF antenna for uh, MCOM. I think we heard from uh, Mike Burton's talk that uh, we, we vote for the chameleon. <gasps> Stand by one. Hang on just a second. Oliver just got his uh, chameleon, so I think that's what he's going to pull up. for portable HF operations. I understand that this is always a compromise whenever you're doing um, portability. And so what you do want, if you do want to have a contest, is a tower of 150,000 feet. And preferably, you know, well, 150,000 probably gets you into um, just on, anyways, the point here is, um, here's the Chameleon CHA MCOM 2. So, this is your matching unit, and here is the whole set. So this entire kit is what Mike was referring to. So all you need for this is some coax. Hook this up. It's 60 feet long, so it's not super long. Again, it's a compromised antenna, but those work really well. In fact, Evan um, got one of these, and he sent an email, and I have to say, it just he made me laugh so hard, my my stomach hurt. So he said, well, let's try it out. So he laid it out in his living room and was able, in his living room, was able to connect on one watt to the next island over and do digital traffic on one watt. And his point was a good one. His point was, you may not have the luxury of actually being outside. Maybe you're setting up on the inside. So he wanted to try that. And so thank you so much, Evan, for trying this because it certainly has given me a lot more confidence to actually start trying this hey, from the inside. Why not? So it's good fun. Uh, Mike had his hand raised, right? Yes. yes. With that antenna, it is very effective if you use a counterpoise of the same length as your radiant element, at least 60 feet. They can just hang straight down and the rest are on the ground. I highly recommend you feed that antenna with a minimal of 75 foot of coax. RG8X minimum quality coax. I'd like to see you do 213, but it makes it very heavy. And you need a common mode filter, an MFJ915 common mode filter to ensure no products get into the radio or the computer to mess up Express. But if you follow those simple things, that is probably the most effective compromise antenna out there. All our gateways run them. Almost every club member down here, that's, that's their go kit antenna, plain and simple. Thank you. And thank you so much, Mike. And, you know, part of, uh, we've got an HF antenna um, presentation planned for later in the year, but let me point this out right now. Um, any type of NFED that uses a transformer like this, you actually are really well um, off if you take a Lambda times 0 0.05, so 5% of the longest band you're planning on and putting a coax on the end and then a choke and then feed the rest of the coax. And that's been something that's uh, recommended to me by my uh, Swiss friends. And that's, I've tried that out. That works really well keeping any RF out of your system. 
and um, it's actually pretty inexpensive to do as well. You can order a four meter cable, coax cable, a quality four meter coax cable. It's about 13 feet without any problems. So um, thank you so much, Mike, for, for pointing that out. This is excellent and good information as always. All right.